Today I want to talk about one of the coolest and most unique species of lizards that you can own. And in addition to that, it's one of the rarest as well. And in fact, other than the earless monitor, this is probably the rarest species of lizard that you can own, and that is the Chinese crocodile lizard. Sorry, the flies again. Now the Chinese crocodile lizard is a very unique, very interesting, atypical species of lizard that are found in parts of southeastern China, as well as Vietnam. Now these guys get their name crocodile lizard not because of interlocking teeth like the crocodile monitors or because they eat meat or even because they behave like crocodiles it has to do with the scales along the top of their tail if you look at their tail you can see that from the base all the way to the tip they have very large spiky scales that look very reminiscent not exactly identical but really close to an actual crocodile hence chinese crocodile lizard now these guys were very first discovered in 1928, which is pretty late considering a lot of the different dates that we have for many different species of reptile that we know in our hobby. And they were first, again, they were first found by a Chinese researcher named Professor Shin. Then they just kind of fell off the map really, like into very obscurity, it was kind of weird. And then during that time, a German researcher who was given a few specimens reestablished them, and I'm totally going to butcher their name. I just keep fumbling today. So here's the Latin name for them, but he named them after that Chinese researcher, and then that's essentially how we came up with this Latin name. Now, there's been a few arguments about redefining them, putting them into different genuses and things like that. Now they are, as of, I believe, 1994, recategorized into their own monotypical clade and genus, this guy right here. Again, I'm just gonna butcher the name, so I'm just gonna whoop right past that. Now these guys found in the wild occupy very specific habitats, which is part of the reason why they are so rare. Now in the wild, these guys are often found in very slow moving riverlets, creeks, and small ponds that are usually completely covered and, and filled around with very dense vegetation. A lot of their behavior looks somewhat similar to like caiman lizards found in South America, where they're very aquatic. They will spend large amounts of time both in and underwater, sometimes sitting perfectly still, and also a lot of time spending time sitting on branches and rocks above the waterline. And we've seen a lot of that, especially with captive caiman lizards. You see a lot of that very same type of behavior where they spend a lot of time basking, sitting very still on branches, hovering over the water, as well as spending time, large amounts of time underwater. The difference is the crocodile lizard seems to be much more sedentary. They kind of sit a lot. They, they don't move quite often. In fact, there's even like a Chinese or a local kind of thing where they almost call them like an eternal sleep or a like a very sleepy lizard where it looks like they're just always not moving and they're always sleeping. Now, a big part of their habitat and a lot of the behavior also has to do kind of the area that they live in. Being in parts of southeastern China, southeastern Asia, parts of Vietnam, we remember it's a pretty tropical area. During the summer, it can actually get over 100 degrees Fahrenheit or 38 essentially for everyone else who's not in America. And then in the winter, it can actually drop below 30 degrees Fahrenheit or negative four-ish degrees Celsius. And then during that period of time, those are the different periods of time during both during very active and inactive periods for the crocodile lizard. Obviously during when it gets very cold, specifically when it gets into those winter months between essentially March or November and March, um, they get very inactive. They go into a state of close to brumation, not quite to what we have when we think about brumation with like our North American rat snakes, but they become very inactive. And more specifically, it's usually when the water temperature drops below 60 degrees Fahrenheit. That's because they spend so much time in the water. And in all that water, that's what we also have to think about kind of the diets that they have. In the wild, they've been observed eating tadpoles, they've been observed eating a wide variety of multiple different species of invertebrates, but they seem to really favor soft-bodied invertebrates, specifically a large amount of caterpillars and dragonfly larvae made up a big chunk of their diet. They're not very large, they're actually a pretty manageable size for a pet lizard, where males typically only get about ooh, averaging 14 to 16 inches in length, females being a little bit smaller. The really cool is I described a little bit earlier to where they are a very atypical looking lizard. They have that kind of weird, funky little head. They don't have huge conicals or anything like the mountain horn lizards, as well as they have really, they can have really bright, vibrant, flashing color from especially the males who are obviously much brighter than the more drab looking apparent uh, females, which is a good form and example of sexual dimorphism. 
but they can have almost like a reddish orange color from their throats and it just kind of goes down their sides and then closer to the tail sometimes it can bleed into almost kind of like a yellowish color with different bands um, and the darker amount and the darker coloration on the top and on the bottom of the lizards really really cool species of lizard now in captivity number one they're going to be very very hard to find they're just they they don't pop up very often but in captivity for a long time we had really trouble keeping them including in zoological facilities and that's because there basically was no information out there how to keep them they were basically keeping them in aquariums with a rock for them to sit on and that was not okay and in fact that's how even till this day a lot of semi-aquatic reptiles are being kept <coughs> sliders <coughs> cough cough mm, cough um, which isn't good but we've now figured out that we can try to replicate their environment a little bit so you know, a decent amount of space that provides a good amount of very clean, warm, filtered water, as well as plenty of opportunity and area for them to bask, for them to hang out on the ground. Lots of climbing opportunities because as we, you know, stated, they like to hang out on branches over the water, plenty of rocks, and not to mention plenty of cover of both foliage and hides for them to get away from and out of view. And remember again, keeping that very, very humid thing. So in that part of China where, in Vietnam as well, where they are found, because of the area that it is and because it is so warm, even during the periods of when it gets really cold, dipping down below 32 degrees, it doesn't stay that cold very long, there is a large amount of precipitation there as well. Thus to where it is very often found that it is in perpetual fog for all times of the year for very long periods of time in general. So high, high humidity. So thinking in captivity, we're thinking probably a humidifier or a fogger running a lot of the time. Cool species of lizard. All the video that you have seen thus far in this video and for the remaining part of the video are all in big, big thanks to my good buddy from 310 Exotics. They have a really cool uh, Instagram and uh, TikTok and a really cool uh, just social media presence. They know quite a bit about a bunch of different species of reptiles and they were kind enough when I asked if I could get a little bit of B-roll from them, they sent some over to me. So if you can, please, I'll put a link to a lot of their stuff in the description of this video. Go check them out. They do really, really cool stuff. They seem to do, as far as feeding goes in captivity, they seem to do very well on a wide variety of uh, invertebrate diet, so plenty of insects. Um, probably the larger hard-bodied, like larger dubia roaches and things like that, probably stay away from, I would imagine, considering how much they seem to favor caterpillars and dragonfly larvae and other insect larvae and stuff like that in the wild, so maybe think something similar to that. Heck, maybe even like the canned snails that we give the caiman lizards, they'd probably do very well on as well. Really, really cool species of lizard, but again, they are very hard to come by. Come by. They are exceedingly rare. They are very endangered. Their estimated population in the wild is around a thousand-ish, and that fluctuates a lot because even though we know they're endangered, it wasn't until very recently they were moved to a CITES-1 classification, which basically means that up until that point, they, even though they were endangered, they were still allowed to be exported in certain regulated numbers. And so that's why the population fluctuates. So in combination with the constant exportation of them, of a need and a want for both the, you know, exotic pet trade, like that we like to have, as well as a lot of old world and traditional uh, medicine and practices like that, they are harvested for that as well. And not to mention because of that very, very specialized habitat that we talk about, the habitation for these guys is becoming increasingly, increasingly smaller and harder to find, not only for us to find them in the wild, but for them to actually live there. And in fact, they are so rare. If you guys have heard of the EDGE, it's a program that was uh, started up in London that talks about a bunch of different endangered species from all over the world. These guys are ranked number six. They were at number five for a long time, which means that they are the highest ranked reptile and exceedingly high on the list in general because it is incorporates quite a few different species of endangered species that incorporates both how many they have, the habitat that they can have, um, that they can habitate, that they could be go back into, the different breeding programs and captive breeding programs. There's a whole slew of information um, and data that goes to, that compiles to determine where on that list of the edge that they sit in. And so the Chinese crocodile lizard sits very high, not only the highest for reptile, but just high in general. And fortunately, there is not a whole lot of conservation work being done with them. However, I have seen, um, as I'm getting more into being 
a little bit tied to like overseas different reptile keepers. I'm seeing that crocodile lizards are starting to be bred a little bit more in captivity in other places outside of the US. I'm sure that there are several people here in the United States that are working with them um, that are actively breeding them. I don't know for sure. I'm not even sure if 310 Exotics is trying to breed them or not. I'm not 100% uh, sure on that. Either way, really cool species of lizard, but again, incredibly endangered. So always wanna remember that you're making sure that you're tracking down if you decide you wanna get this amazing species of lizard. To number one, do your research about that, not just watching this video, but going to check out other papers and other things and other people who have kept them for a while, how they do it, how it would work for your setup, and make sure that you always try to find to make sure that it is a captive born and bred animal to hopefully be able to sustain wild populations until they can get much more established if they can again. But again, thank you so much. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. It was really fun to talk about this really cool species of lizard that I honestly didn't know too, too much about. Thanks again to 310 Exotics for giving me this video. Go check their stuff out again, the description and below this video. Hopefully you guys did enjoy this. I have a whole playlist of different species spotlights, both of my own animals as well as other people's animals like the Chinese crocodile lizards as well as many of the other, you know, old world rat snakes that I have featured a number of times. So there's a whole playlist. I'll put it here at the end of the video. Like and subscribe if you can. Thank you so much. Hope you're having a great day and we'll check you next time.